we're talking about the post office. Neither rain nor snow nor heat nor gloom is stopping those packages, but political infighting? We'll see if that does the trick. That's right, the debate in the capital is whether to bail out the post office. And the great thing with this debate is whichever side you agree with, well, there's a well-paid lobbyist who agrees with you. It's a question of whether you want to side with Amazon trying to keep prices low or FedEx trying to raise prices and undercut the federal government's post office. Or something about rural communities only having access to USPS last mile deliveries, but they don't spend billions of dollars on campaigns. So what's the issue? Well, the United States Post Office is broke, and there are a bunch of ideas on how to get it back on its feet. Let's start with the executive branch's plan. Do you support uh, any money for the Postal Service? So I can comment on that, Mr. Ahead, President. Postal Service. So we authorized in the last CARE Act uh, over $10 billion of a loan. Uh, my team is already actively working on that with the Postal Service if they need the money, and we're, we're dealing with that. The CARE Act allocated $10 billion for a Treasury Department loan to keep the agency on firmer ground through the spring of 2020. Well, it's pretty far along in the spring of 2020, and they still haven't seen a cent of that money. This is because Mnuchin is notoriously protective of America's finances, and really makes companies go the extra mile before they can get a government loan. He negotiated with the airline so hard, I'm surprised they don't now operate Greyhound buses instead. Of course, this tough talk raises a few issues in the context of a service that is pretty critical during a near national lockdown. This brings us to the crux of the issue because what does the federal government want to see change in the post office for the release of this $10 billion in congressionally allocated aid? and potentially the release of $75 billion additional dollars that the post office has requested. Oh man, that's a lot of stamps. The question of what the government wants from the post office really depends on who you ask, as Donald Trump has a very specific solution to this problem. The postal service is a joke because they're handing out packages for Amazon and other internet companies, and every time they bring a package, they lose money on it. Ooh, I see that the post office decided to take the movie pass path to success. Yes, I'd start my investigation into bleeding money there, which I did. Contrary to Trump's claims, the post office is not losing money when it delivers a package for Amazon or other companies. It can't. By law, the agency is barred from charging delivery prices below what it costs the agency to fulfill them. So at worst, the USPS is breaking even on those arrangements. Just when I thought I finally had a simple episode. So what's really going on here? Well, while they make money on every service provided, it's not enough to outweigh the many massive operational costs not directly related to each sale. Blockbuster made money every time a DVD got rented, but they ended up getting blockbusted. As the Postmaster General Megan G. Brennan said, and wow, I was expecting a crazier uniform, at least some epaulets. Despite growth in our package business, our financial results reflect systemic trends in the marketplace and the effects of an inflexible, legislatively mandated business model that limits our ability to generate sufficient revenue and imposes costs upon us that we cannot afford. Now, With this slight layer of nuance out of the way, Trump and Mnuchin's solution could still work. What they argue should happen is that the post office should raise shipping prices so that the amount they make per sale is enough to cover all their costs, and then maybe even turn a profit. So what's the actual proposal? The post office, if they raise the price of a package by approximately four times, it'd be a whole new ball game. But they don't want to raise because they don't want to insult Amazon, and they don't want to insult other companies perhaps that they like. The post office should raise the price of the packages to the companies, not to the people. Uh, if they don't raise the price, I'm not signing anything. Sure, Trump has a way with words that just makes you want to say no, but there's a definite strong argument that can be made to support this perspective. The United States Postal Service doesn't have a monopoly on shipping packages, so they have to compete with other companies for contracts. 
your FedExes, UPSs, you get the picture. Now this competition is largest amongst companies that ship literal tons of stuff, like Amazon. This setup would make it seem like it would be a terrible idea to suddenly quadruple prices. Oh, the competitors just tripled their price. Goodbye contracts. The argument you could make though is that the USPS is undervaluing its very unique setup. Unlike the other shippers, the US Postal Service has a legal monopoly and obligation to deliver first class mail or letters to every house in the country. This means that they're going door to door no matter what. So when it comes to last mile deliveries or deliveries from postal hubs to homes, they're the ones you call. According to USPS spokesperson David Rupert, especially in rural America, shippers such as FedEx, UPS, and others have found it more economical to pay us to deliver packages. When you order things off the internet, always assume that the postal service is going to deliver it. So use your PO box number. Gee, I wonder why it's more economical to use your service. Unfortunately, Amazon UPS contracts are secret, so we can't see exactly what's going on. So that's the first level of this Trump argument. They might be severely undervaluing their unique last mile delivery services. The larger concern is that this undervaluing directly hurts Amazon's competitors. Think about it this way. I can either get free two day shipping on Amazon, or I can go to the seller's site and pay five bucks for two day shipping. Yeah, that's not great for non Amazon online sales. Quadrupling prices though might be a bit of an exaggeration. <gasps> what? Trump exaggerating? But there's definitely room to be a little skeptical about the prices for large shippers. Of course, there are arguments against this. First, the flip side of the competition coin. Basically the concern I mentioned earlier. If you quadruple your prices, everyone else will triple their prices, hurting consumers and putting your Rolodex through quite the diet. Wow, did this thing get thin fast. For years, FedEx and UPS have relied on the US Postal Service for final mile delivery on parcels. FedEx said earlier this year that it would shift all of its SurePost parcels to its own ground network by the end of 2020. You start overvaluing your hand that you were dealt, you're going to lose it. The Democratic leadership has taken a different approach to arguing against a price surge though. Mainly right now? Really? Most of the country is locked in their homes and you want to make shipping more expensive? Come on man, we're trying to increase consumption here, right? Democrats are opposed to the government charging citizens more for services provided, calling it a package tax. Hey, the last time there was a stamp tax in America, went over just great. Instead, they're focused on cutting costs and opening up post office to new forms of revenue. The democratic plan really comes in two phases. First, oh no, the post office is slated to be completely out of money by September. It's the only entity doing last mile delivery to people whose directions to their house include the phrase, turn off the paved road. As you can imagine, the concern here is more dire than we have to get Dale that gap catalog this Sunday or else I'll miss this spring sale. The post office is in need of urgent help as a direct result of the coronavirus crisis. It's become clear that the postal service will not survive the summer without immediate help from Congress and the White House. Every community in America relies on the postal service to deliver vital goods and services, including life saving medication. Beyond that though, don't worry guys, lack of reliable rural mail is going to make that whole vote by mail debate for this November a lot more civil. The prescription here, according to the Democrats, is to cancel all of the USPS debt to the treasury, which is about 13 to 14 billion dollars, give them 25 billion dollars to just keep things running, and allow them flexibility to distribute medical tests and medicine ahead of the latest credit card that you've been fully pre-approved for, and just send over your social security number. Over the longer term though, there's a proposed $25 billion to update the aging infrastructure. 
Now this proposal is a little bit harder to nail down and report on because it really just throws everything at the wall and sees what sticks. There's talk of updating postal vans older than I am with the fuel efficiency of walking down the street while dumping a gas can next to you with electric vehicles. That would cut costs. Elizabeth Warren and some other politicians are talking about turning parts of post office into a savings bank, which would introduce a new form of revenue. And lastly, there's a reform floating around that would revamp the post office's particularly strict retirement policy that requires them to prepay benefits 75 years in advance. This program was started in 2006, so we only have to wait uh, 61 more years for it to pay off. That will definitely free up some cash for investment or just keep the lights on. Of course, it's almost weird to present this dichotomy as an argument because uh, none of these things are mutually exclusive ideas. Wait, we can raise prices and revamp vehicles? Be unreasonable, man! The problem is, and this is why it took so long to write this episode, most of the democratic perspective isn't very specific and their worries are more existential. To them, debating specific post office functions under the Trump administration would be like debating the best tax plan for the nuclear apocalypse. I for one think that mutants should be able to be written off as dependents, and looted canned meats, well those should not have to be reported as capital gains. Uh, right now I see a very big danger for our country in the form of the uh, uh, Trump administration's interest in privatizing the, so the post office. This is just about somebody on the outside making money off of the post office instead of recognizing the important role that the postma uh, post office plays. The worry is that the entire debate I've talked about so far in this episode is in bad faith. And the real endgame goal is to keep funds out of the post office's hands, driving it to bankruptcy by the time the election happens. The executive branch is consistently shooting down proposals for emergency funding in legislation, and the $10 billion they did grant is currently having its terms set by Steve Mnuchin. As Pelosi said over the weekend, this is really dangerous. Mnuchin at Treasury is trying to leverage the debt situation in a way that must be stopped. And the only way it will be stopped is if the American people understand what a loss it is for them. For them to be toying with this notion that they're going to privatize the postal system is something that the public should be aware of, you're welcome, and should reject. Trump has previously released a plan to privatize the postal system in 2018, but then someone waved a shiny manila envelope labeled Iran in front of him and we promptly stopped talking about that. This privatization, if it ends up happening, will mostly affect access and prices in rural areas, where private companies don't consistently go. So that's exactly what's going on with the post office right now. Until next time, thank you and that's all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube, first I'd like to thank my patrons for helping me put out my videos. If you want to support independent, nonpartisan news looking into the overlooked, join this growing list of exceptional individuals by clicking on that link in the description. Also remember to subscribe and ring that bell so that freedom will continue to ring. Give me a thumbs up if you liked what you saw, and lastly, as always, thank you for watching.